I'm feeling, how you say in English, cute? <laughs> oh. Again with the... Hi guys, so today I'm going to be talking about Icelandic stereotypes in mainstream media such as in movies or TV shows. And for those of you who don't know, my name is Hrapna and I am from Iceland and I frequently talk about Iceland and Icelandic culture and that is why I'm here. I'm not trying to be critical or judgmental at all, I'm simply just trying to inform you guys, tell you guys about the reality of being an Icelander since there's not a lot of Icelandic people who do... Um, this. Before this video starts, I quickly wanted to mention this beautiful necklace that I'm wearing. If you didn't see my last video, um, this one right here, I told you guys about my collaboration with Ana Luisa on this beautiful necklace, which you can buy. I will have the link down below in the description box so you can click it and buy it and it is yours so you can take Iceland with you anywhere you go. So this necklace is inspired by Vatnajökull, which is the largest glacier here in Iceland. And this right here is my baby and I really really hope that you guys will buy it and enjoy it And if you do buy this necklace, then please 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 post a picture on Instagram or on your story and tag me and tag Ana Luisa Here are the Instagram handles. I'm going to be reposting and sending you messages sending you some love and saying thank you for supporting me So yeah, I'm super excited about this. So if you didn't know Ana Luisa is a jewelry brand that makes sustainable jewelry That is the number one reason why I I wanted to work with them. They are super environmentally friendly. They care about our earth, which I also do. That is why I love them so much. So yeah, thank you so much, Ana Luisa, for this opportunity. All right, so let's just get into the video. So first of all, let's talk about Riley from the show Sense8. To be honest, I have not watched this show. However, I did watch a lot of scenes. So Riley is an Icelandic DJ living in London, and she is played by an actress called Tuppence Middleton, and she is from the UK. So this is a scene from season one, episode episode 8, so let's just take a look. Think of the word happy, that rug is the first thing that comes into my head. Especially in Iceland. Icelanders really like it if you get famous somewhere else and then you come back. They respect you more that way. Okay, let's talk about this. We do put people who do well in the world on a pedestal, for sure. Yes, we do appreciate people who are famous here in Iceland, but whenever people get super famous in Hollywood or something, we do have this respect for them. We are just very, very, very excited for them, especially since we are such a small, small country. We have so, so many talented people, artists, bands, all over the world and we are just super proud of them and she's beautiful also wanted to point out that the books on the shelf are actually books in Icelandic. You can see the author's names and those are all Icelandic authors, which I really, really, really appreciate. If I were to move to a foreign country, I would definitely take some Icelandic books with me. Really cool detail that they added. Now let's talk about Riley as a character and her accent. The accent is not over the top, which is very nice. Icelandic people are often given very very over-the-top accent like it's very harsh like this like very harsh and Icelandic yeah <laughs> so you know what I'm talking about it's not super harsh it's not over the top however it is very similar to Rachel McAdams accent in the Eurovision Song Contest movie and I brought you some of mama's whiskey just to say thank you so much for getting us into the contest I wasted a lot of my life with my eyes looking down Afraid of anything beyond the next step. So as you can tell, both of their accents are very light and soft. However, I feel like most people in Iceland have a harsh accent. This is not me being critical. I actually think that she is a very, very talented actress and I do respect that she took on this role. So I actually found a interview with her on the Irish news about the accent. Here she says, I had to work on the accent first. So I worked with a coach and looked at a lot of stuff on YouTube, which I think is great. She also says then when you get to the country itself there's so many variations on the accent so i really hope that i've done it justice it is true that the accent varies not all people are fluent in english some people talk with a very very harsh accent such as my parents if you haven't seen this video over here then you can hear my parents speaking english and then we have people like me who are quite used to speaking english so i don't have a super harsh accent however i do have an accent just because english isn't my first language 
language. I also saw a very interesting article on the Reykjavik grapevine. It is written by an Icelandic woman, so she says Riley is not like a single Icelandic woman I know, but she is the embodiment of every preconception of what Icelandic woman is. And I know what the preconceptions of what an Icelandic woman are because foreign men with IGF, which stands for Icelandic girl fetish, have mansplated to me many, many times. So I don't know Riley's character well enough to say that I agree completely. However, I do know what she is talking about. This IGF thing is very, very common and I have witnessed it many many times basically icelandic women are portrayed in two different ways number one we have someone like rachel mcadams character in the eurovision film we have the innocent soft-spoken elvish like magical creature and number two we have the strong harsh viking women there are these two stereotypes of icelandic women that we do see however it's just not true we aren't just one or the other we we are people we are just normal women so yeah i'm just i'm just not gonna go into that right now with that being said let's jump into the next movie which is the secret life of walter mitty in this scene we have walter mitty talking to a hotel owner who is packing his bag because there is a volcano that is about to erupt hi hey do you uh, do you speak english the hotel is closed um, okay. Okay. the first thing that i noticed is that um walter asks do you speak english and the hotel owner says haven't you been watching the news he says i just find it a little bit strange that he would reply to him in icelandic when he clearly speaks english probably did that because the language is obviously very rare and beautiful and maybe the producers wanted to keep the icelandic language in the film also let's take a look at the sweater that he is wearing that sweater is called lova pesa and it is actually made from wool from icelandic sheep and it is a statement piece here in Iceland. A lot of people have lopa pesas. However, most people don't just wear them every day. I believe that this is uh, in Stekisholmur, which is a small town here in Iceland. So this sweater actually makes a little bit more sense because he is located in Stekisholmur. However, if this were in Reykjavik, which is the capital or in the capital area, it would not make sense at all. You can also see this in the Eurovision Song Contest movie. Yes, it is more common for people to be wearing lopa pesa in small towns such as Stekisholmur or Husavik. However, this is creating a huge, huge stereotype that everyone in Iceland wears lopa pesa all the time. But that's just not true at all. I have another scene which I want to talk about. What's going on? Where is everybody? Eldgos! Come on, Eldgos! Eldgos, yo! Eldgos! Yes! What, are, what does that mean? Erection! 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 Erection? Yes! No! Er <gasps> Eruption! Eruption! Yes! So here the volcano is about to erupt and the hotel owner is clearly freaking out. This is very accurate because he is frustrated. He's trying to tell him that he has to like leave. He's trying to help him. He's in a very, very stressful situation and obviously English is not his first language. So he's trying to tell him in Icelandic, but he's having trouble communicating with him. Very, very good representation and um, not really stereotypical except for the sweater, but because he is in sticky soul mood, it makes sense. That's all that I have to say about the secret life of Walter Mitty, but let's go into the next one. Next, we are talking about Harry Styles' comedy skit on SNL. So in the skit, we have Harry Styles and Heidi Gardner playing an Icelandic couple in a birthing class. So let's take a quick look. Disa and Magnus, how are you doing? First thing that I want to say, she says Disa and Magnus, which are Icelandic names, which I am super happy about. Oh, hi. Uh, I guess I'm um, like these women said. Um, I'm feeling, how you say in English, cute? <laughs> oh. Again, with the super soft-spoken, innocent, elvish, magical type of creature stereotype here. Um, like I said, that is a very, very common stereotype. I find this skit funny, just so we are clear. It's very funny and I love Harry Styles. However, this stereotype is definitely creating a fetish 
for Icelandic women, which I don't like. Let's discontinue watching. Oh, sorry. She learned English on Instagram. She's been feeling, how say, uh, sexy as hell, so to say. We learn English at school from a very early age. We don't learn it from Instagram. I said cute when I meant sexy as hell. <laughs> My sisters, we are the same. I mm. love you. Now, where are you guys from? Iceland. Disa and I just arrived in America on lip syncing visas. So let's talk about that for a second. They are wearing um, knitted sweaters, not lopa pesur, but um, knitted sweaters. Again, a very, very common stereotype that all Icelandic people just wear knitted stuff, <laughs> which we don't, um, as you can see. Again, with the, with the bubbly, always like... I don't know where that stereotype came from. This is very, 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 very similar to Rachel McAdams' character in the Eurovision movie. This is just creating stereotypes, which a lot of men find appealing and cute, and they fetishize Icelandic women, which is not cool. And a lot of Icelandic women get a lot of creepy messages on Instagram from guys who think that we are all like that, which we are not. The accent, again, way too soft. It's not um, harsh enough. We have a very, very, very harsh language, uh, for an example. Like, harsh. We have a harsh language. Again, however, it's this is funny. We think that this is funny. I feel that this is funny. Most people in Iceland think that this is funny. Like, not being critical here. I'm just talking about these stereotypes and, and I'm so curious about how this stereotype came to be. I understand the Viking stereotype, but I, I don't understand that stereotype. Yeah, I feel like that was just a very bubbly dumb <laughs> a couple from Iceland, which wasn't really accurate, but it was funny. So those were just a few stereotypes that I have seen. I just kind of wanted to look at some of them, do a little bit of research. Again, I, I am not being critical. I am just giving you guys an insight to what it's like to live in Iceland, how real Icelandic people are like, not just, you know, what we are like in movies and TV shows. So yeah, hope you guys like this video. If you have more movies or TV shows or comedy skits or anything that you guys want me to react to, then please let me know in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you guys later. Goodbye.